You're so cruel, Andy. I can't believe you'd do such a horrible thing. I've never felt this distraught before. What's the meaning of this? What were you trying to pull? Oh, hello, Samantha. What's the matter? Did something happen? Oh, don't act all innocent on me. You know exactly what happened. You did such a horrible thing to my son. Don't you feel bad for what you've done? He didn't deserve that kind of treatment. Excuse me. What are you talking about? What exactly do you think I did to your son? You got upset at my little Tommy. That's what. Oh, no. Are you talking about the time I scolded him? I wasn't mad at him. I was just giving him a little warning. I did raise my voice, but it wasn't emotionally charged. I meant him no ill will. Same difference. We were all having such a lovely Christmas, too. But thanks to you, that was all ruined. What do you have to say for yourself? I didn't scold him for fun. I scolded him because he kept exhibiting problematic behavior to a point I couldn't ignore anymore. Believe me, I didn't want to have to scold anyone on Christmas. It's supposed to be a time for laughter with family and friends. And parents should be the ones scolding their own children, not me. I didn't want to have to do it, but if you wouldn't, then I had no choice. I remember at the time you wouldn't even lift up a finger. You simply allowed him to do as he wished. It's because he wasn't doing anything worth getting upset over. He wasn't doing anything wrong. Hence why I did nothing. What, you wanted me to yell at him over that? To torment my own child, is that it? That's not what I'm saying, but I'm astonished. You were there that day. You mean to tell me that you didn't once think that anything was wrong. That child would verbally harass me and caused other people around him to get physically injured. Not to mention how he was running around the house so much. He crashed into some important farming equipment and destroyed them. So, he's a child. I'd understand you being upset if he was an adult, but children can't be blamed for what they do. That's why I don't think this is worth getting so angry over. It's true that if he were two or three years old, I think there isn't much we could do either. But he's in elementary school now. He should at least have some discipline at his big age. And he has to know that if he does something wrong, he'll be scolded for it. That's child rearing 101, isn't it? Why won't you do that much? I'm not asking you to raise your hand against him. I think practices like that should stay in the past. But surely scolding should be fine. If he's unable to distinguish between what's right and wrong, he'll be suffering for it later in life, you know. Think of it as being for his sake. He may react negatively now, but he'll understand and appreciate what you've done for him once he's an adult. That's how it was with your husband as well. And look how he turned out. Physical punishment isn't the only thing that should stay in the past. I think scolding children in general is outdated. In our household, we've resolved not to raise our child by scolding him. There's no place for that under our roof. That's not a proper upbringing. That's what they call abandonment or spoiling the child. You've essentially given up on him and that's why you let him do what he wants. That's not true. Everyone raises their child differently and this is how I want to raise my child my way. You may not like it, but that's what we've decided. Could you not barge in and criticize how we do things in my house? I didn't ask for your opinion. But I can't simply ignore it. I avoid stepping out of line and making unnecessary comments. But when you're visiting me for the holidays, that means you're in my house now. I have a right to speak out if something's happening under my roof that I don't approve of. Your son was causing all kinds of chaos on Christmas. I couldn't ignore that. And with how out of hand he was, I wouldn't say that your method of bringing him up is going well. No, that's wrong. It's going great. I understand it's difficult to admit when you're wrong, but you need to stop being stubborn. You should reconsider how you've been raising him and try a different method. Raising your first child is all about experimentation. If something doesn't work, you shrug it off and try something else. If you stubbornly stick to the same thing, even when it's been proven to not work, he's going to grow up into a terrible adult. 
He won't know what to do with himself. You only ever see him when we visit for the holidays. You can't make judgments based on that alone. And just so you know, he's usually a very good boy. But my poor Tommy, he was just so bored at your house. He couldn't help but act out. You live out in the sticks in farm country. There's nothing fun to do there. Of course he wouldn't be able to behave as well as he usually does. But is it normal for him to act so violently? His relatives are all gathered here. Again, he's in elementary school. He should have enough self-control to not cause physical harm to the people around him. I mean, he nearly injured even my daughter's child. I was so anxious watching him around the house. I'm simply relieved she was at least okay. He wasn't going to hurt anyone. Give my little boy some credit, will you? Do you think he's a monster or something? What are you talking about? Your son came up behind Sarah and shoved her off of the porch. She managed to land all right, so everything was fine. Aside from some scrapes and bruises, she wasn't seriously injured. But if she had fallen head first, things could have turned out much worse. But she didn't. She was completely fine. We can say that now after the fact, but no matter how you look at it, that was dangerous. There were plenty of ways that could have gone terribly wrong. If you don't make Tommy understand that, it's going to get him in big trouble sooner or later. What's been up with your attitude? Don't treat my child like some kind of societal deviant. I'm not upset at your child. I'm upset at you. Why me? Children are very malleable. They're human beings, but they're heavily influenced by their environment and the things around them. If they're behaving in an unacceptable manner, chances are something is going on at home or around them. I can't really fault them for it. But you're a grown adult. You should know better, and yet you don't. I can't believe it. You won't apologize when your child has caused a complete ruckus, and when that same child is causing injury to those around him, you won't try to have him settle down. At this point, it's not your child who's the problem here. It's you. How dare you speak to me like that? Why do you keep blaming me and making this all to be my fault? I'm not his only parent. You're not, but I saw how your husband was behaving. He was trying to get him to stop and scolding him. He was doing his best while you were sitting there doing nothing. He was also apologizing profusely to the people around him while you, again, weren't doing anything. I can't blame him. He was trying so hard. But you pretended like you didn't notice anything. And now, you've even been lashing out at me. The reason why I wasn't doing anything is because my husband was already scolding him. I didn't think there was any need for both of his parents to be telling him off. That's different from the story you were telling me. You originally told me you weren't scolding him because that's not how you were raising him and that you didn't see anything wrong with what he was doing. I suppose that doesn't matter now. At any rate, you caused my daughter's family quite a bit of trouble. You were blaming me for turning our Christmas into a huge disaster. But don't ever forget that it was actually your fault, not mine. And don't think I'll tolerate this for much longer. If this is going to continue, I don't want you coming back to my house for the holidays anymore. How dare you? You're clearly favoring your daughter's family over us. It's unfair. Of course I'm not. I'm just telling you, you need to rethink the way you've been dealing with your child. Because I don't think that you're taking enough responsibility as a parent. Okay, come on. The only reason you're upset at us is because Tommy broke some of your farming equipment, right? Get over it already. My husband told you he'd pay for the replacements, didn't he? Why are you still holding it against us? This isn't a problem that can be resolved with money. I don't care about that. Before you complain to other people, re-examine your own speech and conduct and improve them. If you don't change yourself, your son won't change either. You have to set a good example for Tommy as a parent. Children absorb everything. If the parents are acting one way, the child will follow in their footsteps unless corrected. I knew it! You hate my son after all, don't you? 
that's why you're so strict to him and no one else. I finally realized it. There's nothing you can say to convince me otherwise. You have something against my son. What's this all of a sudden? Your daughter's kid is more important than your son's, isn't she? Okay then, why? What exactly is it you don't like about my son? Is it because he's my kid? Are you holding a grudge against him just because you don't like me? My word, Samantha. Please calm down. You're jumping to false conclusions here. What exactly are you upset about now? The children's Christmas money! What's wrong with it? I gave all the children money like I do every year. Sure you did, but it wasn't equal. I heard you gave Sarah way more money than my Tommy. No matter how you look at it, this is favoritism. What other reason is there that you couldn't give them the same amount? No way. You asked my daughter how much money her child received. I'm astonished. What? Oh, I bet you didn't want me to ask. After all, then I'd be finding out how you were clearly preferring one kid over the other. Anyway, don't change the subject. You were short $10 when you gave my son his money. Why did you give him less, huh? I'd like you to explain yourself right now. I don't have any evil secret for why I did that. I just change how much I give the kids based on what grade level they're in. And Sarah's a grade level above Tommy. That's why she gets more money. Really? Just a school year's difference is worth $10? If a child's in first grade, we give them $10. In second grade, we give them $20. So on and so forth. That's how we go about it every year. Sarah's in 6th grade, so she gets $60. Tommy's in 5th grade, so he gets $50. I'm not playing favorites here. I have a clear logic. And it's not like I started doing this last minute. I've been doing it all these years. Don't you know that? Really now? I have my doubts. Isn't it the truth that you gave Sarah more just because you prefer her over my Tommy? I understand you wouldn't want to admit it, but I see through you. Could you quit assuming the worst in people? It's not that deep. Of course I wouldn't do that. Look, Tommy definitely received more money from me this year than last year. You should have noticed at least that much, right? Samantha, I think you ought to calm down some. From how you've been behaving, I can't help but assume you must have some kind of victim complex. You're rather paranoid. Can you blame me? You're always strict to me and no one else. And you're cold to my son just because you hold a grudge against me. It's not right. You're talking about what I said at our Christmas family gathering, huh? You still don't understand why I got so upset with you. Just so you know, even your husband's getting fed up with you. Huh? Did my husband say something to you? For a while now, he's been coming to me for advice for all sorts of things. I lend him a listening ear when I can. Apparently, you two have very different values, and you can't agree on how you want to raise your child. He doesn't understand what you're thinking. So, you're talking ill about me behind my back. Is that what you're trying to tell me? You two are horrible. My husband should at least be on my side. We're not doing anything like that. He's just confiding in me about your difference in values and what he should do regarding it. He's not saying whether it's good or bad, just that it's different and that it might be causing some strain in your relationship. No, that's still bad-mouthing me. Do you want to isolate me by getting my husband on your side? Is that it? That's how much you hate me. I see how it is. You're unbelievable. Oh my god. Again with the victim complex. Please stop with that. I'm getting really tired of it. You twist everything I say against you to make it look like I'm attacking you somehow. I don't have a victim complex. You keep complaining about me, but just so you know, this is totally harassment. I see now that there really are some horrible mother-in-laws out there. It's true that I don't have a very favorable opinion of you right now. You've been acting like a child. 
but I wouldn't do something as immature as harass you just because I don't like you. I'm especially not going to play favorites for such a silly reason. I wonder about that. Because you're definitely hurting me. You really are just the worst, aren't you, Andy? Andy, I got you now. You can't wiggle your way out of this one. No matter how you look at it, this is wrong. I can't possibly let it slide. I thought as much before, but this proves it. This really is harassment, isn't it? Okay. Why are you mad today? Sarah and Tommy's birthdays were this month. You usually give them both their presents at the same time. But you haven't given my son anything. That's unfair. Ah, I see. That's what you're upset about, huh? According to her mother, you apparently bought her a brand new video game. Those can get expensive. Are you telling me you couldn't spare some more money to get my son something nice too? Indeed, that was on purpose. I have no intention of giving your son a present this year either. Why not? This is so horrible. To think that my son wouldn't get a present on his birthday? That's just too cruel, even for you. I feel so bad for him. His poor little heart must be breaking. From now on, I'll only be giving presents to Sarah and any future children my daughter may have. I also won't be giving your son any Christmas money from now on. Quit playing favorites. You're the worst. You may not like me, but my child is your grandson. He's one of your only two grandchildren. You have no right to treat him so poorly. How can you find it in yourself to pick and choose between the two of them when they're both related to you by blood? What are you talking about? Your child is no grandson of mine. He's a stranger. What? You see, I only have one grandchild. The only grandchild I have is the one my daughter birthed. No one else. So, you finally admitted it, didn't you? That you're playing favorites and holding a grudge against my son just because you don't like me. No, that's wrong. It can't be considered playing favorites amongst my grandchildren. Because your child is not my grandson. Of course, you should treasure your own grandchild over a stranger. That's obvious. How could you say something so cruel? What did he do to you? I'm hurt. Why are you hurt? I've only spoken the truth. I never thought you'd be this inhumane. Do you have no heart? I didn't expect much from you, but this is a new low. You're one to talk. Your victim complex is so strong that you refuse to consider anyone else other than yourself. You think any word against you must be an attack. I bet you thought nothing of my son and I, that we were nothing but a nuisance to you. If that's the case, then fine. We'll get out of your hair at once. We're leaving. I'll take my son and go back to my parents' house. Go ahead. Do as you like. It's no skin off my nose. I have absolutely no intentions of stopping you if that's what you'd like to do. In fact, you don't have to ever come back. Don't bother. Tell my husband for me that I'm going to be leaving the house and it's all because of you. It's your fault I can't stay here. Understood. I'll tell him for you. Although that won't be changing anything. I doubt your husband will try to stop you either. So, you're assuming he'll be on your side, are you? He better not be, or else I'll divorce him. Oh, I see. You want to get a divorce. I think it's about time my husband realizes just how angry I am. I've had enough. I won't accept this torment anymore. If I pull the divorce card on him, I'm sure that'll get him all panicked and he'll be begging me to stay. But that won't work on me because I'll only come home after you formally apologize to me. I want you on your hands and knees begging me for forgiveness. Now, why on earth would I do that? I already said you don't ever have to come back. You can only say that now because my husband isn't aware of what I'm about to do. 
Once he is, he's really gonna let you have it and you'll come crying to me. After all, I doubt he'll let things stay the way they are now. Andy, what's the meaning of this? I don't understand. I just got these divorce papers sent to me from my husband. Hmm? Why? What are you surprised for? Isn't that what you wanted? You said so yourself. You wanted to get a divorce. All you have to do now is fill out those papers and you can get your wish just like that. No, I didn't mean it. I wasn't being serious. I'm sure you realized it yourself, didn't you? I said all that because I wanted to hear you apologize to me. Oh, really? But my son was talking about how he's totally fine with divorcing you. It doesn't seem like he wants you to come back at all. He's fine with you staying over where you are, even if that means never seeing you again. I understand how it is now. My husband is your little yes man, isn't he? I can't believe he wouldn't defend me. He's supposed to be my partner. I don't care if you're his mother. He should see you're in the wrong and protect me. Unforgivable. If this is the case, fine. I'll divorce him. But I'll definitely be claiming alimony from him. What on earth are you talking about? Such nonsense. You have it backwards. He'll be the one claiming alimony from you. Isn't it obvious? Uh, what? Why me? Are you trying to scare me? Well, it's not going to work. I know my son and I are the victims in this case. Anybody would take her side, including the court. You've ostracized us and made us feel like we don't belong in your family. That's just wrong of you. It's all because of you that we didn't feel we could stay in that house anymore. We were unwelcome and unwanted. Shunned. Oh, please, don't pretend you're the victim. I'm quite tired of it. I'm not pretending. You treated me poorly and caused us so much suffering. And you clearly were playing favorites with your grandchildren, even though neither of them have done any wrong. No matter how you think of it, we're clearly the victims here. Anybody would say so. Again with that. I told you I wasn't treating you poorly. I just gave you both a slight scolding because your behavior was getting out of hand. Also, your child is no grandson of mine. You'd know that better than anyone, wouldn't you? Why do you keep saying that? Are you going senile or something? How much more of a vile human being could you possibly be? Is that how much you despise my child? All because I gave birth to him? The problem isn't that you were the one who gave birth to him. The real problem here is, that child of yours does not belong to my son. Huh? What are you saying? Oh my, you don't get it. I suppose I have to simplify it for you, although I didn't think it was that difficult to understand in the first place. You had that child with someone else. Someone else fathered it. That means my son is not his father. Those two aren't related by blood. He's someone else's kid. What grounds do you have to make such a wild claim? How dare you? Are you trying to insult me? We do have solid grounds to assume this, though. Excuse me? A little while ago, you were talking about how you wanted a second child, right? I did. You see, my son is well on the older side now. He was unsure whether he was still fertile enough even at his age. It was a major concern for him. So he underwent an examination. What? When did he do that? And what do you know? The results of that examination were very interesting. His reproductive capability is extremely low. It's basically impossible for him to induce a natural conception with someone else. No way. I mean... But I had his kid. There's no way those results are accurate. But the numbers they gave at that examination don't lie. I'd consider them good enough proof. And the doctors say as much themselves. Doesn't that mean it's true? Well, then I'm sure the reason his reproductive capability went down is because he fathered my first child. 
It decreased after I gave birth to him. That couldn't be. They said it was congenital. It was always this low from the get-go. Hearing that, I'm sure he started getting suspicious. He quietly ordered a DNA test without telling you, so it's easy to figure as much. And the results of that were shocking. It was complete and utter proof that your son is not related by blood to your husband. It has to be some kind of mistake. This can't be. I didn't know anything about this. No, it's true. That child of yours is no grandson of mine. There's no doubt about it anymore. That's why I didn't care at all if you left. If anything, I wanted you two to get a divorce as soon as possible. It's clear that you haven't been valuing my son as much as you should be. I mean, you betrayed my son and cheated on him behind his back. I don't want him to stay married to someone so horrible. He deserves much better than the likes of you. No, you've got it wrong. I didn't cheat on him. I wasn't having an affair with anyone. What part of it is wrong? That's the only way this makes sense. I mean, science proved as much. That you went and conceived a child with someone who wasn't your husband. You can't run away from the facts. I'm sorry. It was just a spur-of-the-moment thing, a little mistake. I had no idea it'd wind up with me getting pregnant. I honestly thought it was my husband's. So, basically, you want to claim it was just a one-night stand. Well, whether it was a one-night stand or a long-term relationship, adultery is adultery. It doesn't matter how you package it if the contents are the same. You've committed a heavy sin. I didn't intend to betray my husband like this. It was an honest mistake. Come on, we may be human, but that doesn't free us from our instincts. Please, I wasn't having an affair. It was just a one-time thing. Would you stop with the excuses already? No matter how you try to defend yourself now, all you've succeeded at doing is making me even angrier. Anyway, stay at your parents' house for as long as you'd like. It's of no concern to me. No, please, let me come back home. I'm begging you. No, we're busy having your stuff prepared and ready to send over to your parents. Your in-laws and I are assisting your husband in cleaning the place up. It's so tough on my poor boy to do this all by himself. He seemed grateful for the help. No, please let me talk to him. I need to speak directly with him. Why? What exactly are you dying to talk about with him? This is all already set in stone. All you have to do now is sign those papers and send it our way. There's nothing else you can do now. I'll apologize for all the things I've done to you up until now. All the complaining and the accusations, everything. I'm so sorry for acting the way I did. I was totally out of line. I had no right to speak to you like that. So? Could you please find it in your heart to forgive me? Please? I'm begging you. I can't raise this child all on my own. Why not? Aren't you happy that you're getting a divorce? From now on, you get to raise that child just the way you want to. You don't need to hear anyone else's opinions on it. And you won't have those pesky relatives nitpicking and complaining anymore. You're on your own now. After that, Samantha and my son continued to live separately. During that time, she apologized profusely to my son on numerous occasions. But of course, he couldn't find it in himself to forgive her. Who could blame him, really? A few months later, they finally got a successful divorce. For a while, she'd been staying with their parents, living at their house rent-free. But her child was stirring up such a huge ruckus, her parents basically chased them out. After that, she's been hopping from one man to another. I've heard things like she's gotten involved with marriage scams, or that her child got in trouble with the police. I don't know how much of it is true, but nonetheless, the rumors surrounding her have all been thoroughly unpleasant. If there's one thing that's for certain, it's that she isn't leading an upstanding, honest life. After that experience, my son has declared that he will not be marrying anyone else and has started living together with me. As of now, the two of us are still living together, just the two of us getting along fine. Thanks for watching! If you made it this far, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. 
Also, don't forget to leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. What did you think? Be sure to let us know. We're looking forward to your responses. See you next time.